Okay, welcome to part two of our Seattle Kraken franchise I'm uh, doing online. Uh, partially to show off the fact that I love this mode, partially to show off, show off to non-NHL fans how deep uh, of a franchise mode you could have in other games, uh, a la Madden is the main focus here. I am a football guy, if you don't know me, uh, but I do dabble in other sports, mainly hockey. Uh, I do like the sport. I understand the sport pretty well, even though I am from the southern United States. It's not exactly a hockey hotbed, but uh, the Florida teams have a couple pretty good teams. Lightning, Panthers, you know, so. Um, but I, my first video I did was a live stream. It was a long live stream because I was going through the entire process of doing the expansion draft and going through my, my thought process and, and explaining what why I was getting the players I was getting. And uh, if you hadn't caught that video, it's, it's a pretty long one. I may drop the link uh, below in this particular video just to kind of give you an idea of where we're at. Um, we are currently a day before the draft, as it says there, the 22nd. And in my live stream video, I mentioned that draft interviews is one of the things in NHL franchise mode that I don't care for. Um, and the reason I don't care for it, funny enough, is because it feels very tacked on Madden-like. And when I go into it, if you're familiar with the Madden franchise and, and franchise mode in Madden, you may understand why um, as I jump in. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to show it off. There are a couple of players I would like to get some more information on. That's the one good thing about it, but the rest of it is just... Uh, it, it's it's it, if you don't like drafting in Madden NFL, the whole point click type style interface, uh, then you will not like draft interviews. Thankfully, it's very short. So, but I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna dive in now, just to show it off. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, this is the draft board for this particular draft class. I've gone through off camera and done some scouting of some players based on their coaching schemes. In other words, how they fit with my current coach. Uh, because I plan on keeping my coach for at least a couple of years. So I want to get guys that within the next two or three years could be NHL ready and fit pretty well fit the scheme uh, of my current coach. Now, I found a couple of candidates in the top 10. I'm picking sixth in this draft. The guys that are starred are guys that my scouts recommend I pick. However, looking at their, their schemes... Uh, they don't fit my coach's scheme, particularly uh, the defenseman side. Uh, my my coach likes defensemen that uh, where you see hold pinch. He prefers players that hold the line, not pinch. So this guy would not be a fit on pretty much any line except maybe the first line, um, which wouldn't be a bad pick per se. But I'd like to get players that fit a little bit more. The thing that worries me about the guys I've planned, as you can see, uh, this Christensen guy is elite level potential, but it's only about 50% unlocked. So he could be a top four defenseman, uh, maybe even a top six defenseman. Usually, though, in the first draft of the NHL franchise, which this is the first draft I've done with this team, usually you don't see guys uh, with a lower tier potential like a top six in this top ten yet usually i emphasize the term usually um so this guy will probably be at worst a top four um if he was elite i'd probably i'd i'd be more okay with taking him uh this guy rainer reiner rankle uh the problem with him is he does not fit my coach's scheme at all he looks to be a playmaker or a sniper i know it lists him as a two-way forward but i'm thinking he's a sniper style player just because of his uh, offensive tendencies so I'm thinking I might be off on the two-way forward bit even if he is a two-way forward though uh, his current schemes don't really mesh well uh, with my coach except on the fourth line and with a top 10 pick I don't want to be picking guys that are fourth line players um, you can kind of understand if I'm picking in, I'm picking in the, the sixth overall pick in the draft I want to get a guy that in a year or two or even three years at the most will be able to jump in and contribute on, on, on at a high level at one of my top two lines. So I've looked at these two guys down here, uh, Gustav Grachev out of Russia and Theo Rochette out of the QMJHL. Um, the problem I feel with both of these guys is the worry is you see that bottom six. Now that is 50% accurate. More than likely at worst, they're top nine 
I'm hoping they're just top six and I'm just really poorly scouted them. Um, but it's kind of a hope thing. So again, you got that whole, um, you know, unknown factor that worries you about wasting a top 10 pick, a top six pick. But the thing about Grachev uh, that I like is he actually fits my coach's scheme for, I believe it's the second line. Let me double check. Yeah, he fits the second line to a T. So this is a guy that in two years, his NHL ETA is two years. This is a guy that could potentially be a second line player for me and be a good second line player because he would completely 100% uh, be in sync with the coach's second line strategies. And you can see his strengths and weaknesses right now, goal scoring, playmaking ability. So I'm thinking he's either a playmaker or a sniper. Uh, right now he's listed as a two-way forward. I'm thinking... He's a, he's a sniper or a playmaker. I'm not sure. Uh, now, he is ranked ninth in the draft class. I would be picking him at six, so I'd be reaching a little bit. But I feel like this guy would be a much better fit for us. He would need a couple of years to grow in the AHL. But the nice thing is, uh, if you didn't watch my first episode, which I understand it's two hours long. It's long. Um, but the thing about Grachev is uh, he would fit in the AHL because my AHL coach is very closely aligned with my NHL coach. So if this is the guy that has the overall to play out the gate, uh, this would be a guy that could start on that second line and grow on that second line immediately, or maybe need a year as a depth player. And then the second year he jumps into that AHL top six, performs well, and then I bump him up to the big, uh, to the big boy squad in the NHL within that two year spectrum. So I'm, I'm thinking ahead a little bit with this pick. Um, Theo Rochette's a guy, he has three years. Uh, before he is able to play so he's a little bit further out but the thing I really like about him is he does he fits our third line pretty well so if I'm going by my my staples early of I don't want to burn a top six pick on a guy that doesn't play in the top six I'd probably lean away from this guy but I do like the fact that he fits most of my tendencies of my third line now, he doesn't 100% fit like Mr. Grachev does, so I'm more likely to pick this guy if he's worth a darn. But I want to go in and do some draft uh, analysis of this guy. So I'm going to pick him, and I'm going to interview him. And this is where you're going to see the boredom factor uh, of, the, of this particular feature. This is the part I don't like. So this is a generic text screen we have. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me for an interview. I'm excited to potential of being drafted by your team. So now I get to pick... I have three questions I can ask him. So I only get three questions, and it basically kind of locks him in on what he is. So first thing I want to do is I want to look at his play style, and then he has to respond to it. And then what I want to ask him, because I know his readiness. I actually know his readiness, even though it says question mark. I know that from scouting. So I want to have his playing style. I want to know exactly what his playing style is. And the nice thing about this, one of the nice things is it will 100% unlock that thing no matter how bad you had scouted him. So when I ask him, he gives me the answer, or he gives me a generic answer that I associate with a playing style, and that is 100% accurate because it's straight from the player's mouth. So give me a quick breakdown. And I said he was a, excuse me, I said he was a sniper or a playmaker, so he turns out he is a playmaker. I know his readiness, so I don't really need to worry too much about that. So I'm going to go to a new topic. And then I'm going to wait. Uh, then I'm going to go, let's go skills. Because I would like to know uh, his strengths. What his greatest strength is. So he's he thinks he's a good skater. So he feels like he's a good skater. And what's his biggest weakness? And this will be my last question to this particular prospect. So physicality. So, and to be fair, if you look at his size, that kind of makes sense. So physicality is definitely not his strong point. And then we exit out. And that's it. That's that's a draft interview. So now I get a breakdown right here of what he is uh, based on the questions I asked and he answered. So I know he's a playmaker. I know he likes to he can he feels like he can skate well. And I feel and he weakness is physicality. So I go in and now if I go in, unfortunately, usually sometimes or I say usually sometimes this little potential will go up based on that interview. As you can see, it didn't. But if you look right here, this was that two way forward with three bars of accuracy. Now it says playmaker with four bars of accuracy. So that is 100% accurate. I come in and now you can see I don't actually have any extra strengths and weaknesses unlocked. So really he may have been 
fooling me a little bit on uh, his skill set and how good he is. So that could be a bad thing. But I still have the ETA of two years. I still have the scheme fit, which I like. So this is the guy I'm still considering with that pick. But what I might do is I might see if anybody wants to trade up from six, maybe try and trade down a couple of spots and get some extra picks. The next guy I'm going to interview, even though... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to interview him. Um, no, I'll interview Theo Rochette. I'll talk to him. I get three interviews, as you can see right there in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, I'm going to pop it up. I'm going to interview this guy. So we're going to interview him and see what he's got going on. Uh, let's let's do play style. Let's get your style of play. Because I really would like to find that out. Because uh, I know his ETA is three years. So let's see what he feels like he is. What type of player are you? He is also a playmaker, so interesting. Okay. So two playmakers. That explains why they're second and third line guys. I'm going to ask a different question. I'm going to ask about his personality. Um, what? How would you describe your personality? And just let him talk. I don't tend to get very bent out of shape about anything, and I'm very loyal. I think I have a well-rounded personality. So he feels like he's had a well-rounded personality. Interesting. Okay. So let's let well then let's let's end with the wonderful strengths. I want to know your strength because that's what I'm drafting you on is your strengths, uh, your shot. Interesting. A playmaker that feels like his shot is his best attribute. Usually playmakers are well they value their playmaking abilities, their passing abilities. Uh, so okay, all right. So third line playmaker right there potentially, and his his potential also didn't bump up. So of these two. I'm going to interview Christensen because this is the guy I'd be most likely to take uh, because I feel like he's probably going to be close to elite. So I'm going to interview him as well. And let's go right to play style. And let's ask him what type of player he is. Now, remember, he's a defenseman. So he's going to either give uh, he's going to feel like he's a two way guy, a two way defenseman, an offensive defenseman or a defensive defenseman or rarely an enforcer. But I doubt with his size, I usually most enforcers are like you know six three six four weigh about 220 230 pounds they're big boys because enforcers are supposed to be big boys but give me an idea of your your play style okay he is a two-way defender so that's not a great fit for this team i know except on the first line uh did i have his readiness i don't remember oh i'll ask him readiness uh even if i had it already i'll ask um, he feels like he needs a few seasons. He needs three years, he thinks. So three years before he's ready to play in the NHL. So similar to Theo Rochette, the guy I just interviewed, number two. Um, let's change the subject. And let's go with skills. Let's let's end like we've been doing, or kind of been doing. Let's, let's tell me your strengths, son. Kim Christensen, what is your strength, sir? You're skating. Okay. Well, I guess it makes sense. Two-way defender. You go back and forth. Okay. Cool. You're done. All right. And let's see if that upped his potential rating any. So, okay, we got skating three years. And nope. So we still have no clue if these are going to be bad picks or not. So now we just have to get to the draft. We've done our three interviews. We're allotted. Yeah, you can interview anybody in this list. You don't have to interview top prospects. I've interviewed guys in the second or third round because I've had a lot of picks there and I want to make sure... I nail a guy, or I think I have a guy picked out that's going to be good. I want to make sure, so I interview him down there. But typically, you'll interview guys around your draft slot just to kind of see, you feel them out, see see if they'd be a good fit for you uh, in the long run for your for your major league club, for your NHL club. So I'm gonna exit out here, and now I'm gonna advance a day, and I'm gonna get to the the fun part. So the expansion draft is behind us. We have a core player core of players to build around. Next up is the NHL entry draft and once it's complete i'll touch base with you again in a few months to discuss my expectations for the franchise and you in particular so basically i'm i'm all by myself the owner said hey have fun <laughs> okay so before any time before you hit a major milestone in the off season your pro scout will come on a generic pro scout not one of your 20 will come on and basically it's it's basically gm assistant and says he update he recommends you update your trade block now he will automatically set a trade block based upon what style of team you are. And when I say what style of team you are, uh, they break it down in NHL 21. They break it down into really basic concepts. Uh, you can start from the extreme ends. 
You can be a buyer, which means that you are acquiring talent for a cup run. You're basically at the cusp of being, uh, you're in the playoffs or going to be a perennial playoff team, and you're basically looking to add talent to help you in a cup run. A conservative buyer, which is a team that you're not quite sure if you're going to make the playoffs, but you feel like you might, so you, you, you'll buy smart. You're still looking to acquire talent, but you're not going all in. Uh, then you have conservative seller, which means you're probably not going to make the playoffs. So you want to kind of get rid of some assets, but not all your major players. Or seller, which means that you are pretty much, you're out of the playoff race. You are not necessarily tanking because in the NHL, there is a draft lottery system. So you, even if you tank, there's no guarantee you'll get the top pick in the draft. Um, but you're basically looking towards next season. So you're looking to acquire prospects and draft picks for future for future seasons. I'm going to look at the trade block. I usually don't. So let's see what they say. They're trying to get rid of all my second and third round picks. Uh, they say we have a surplus of picks. And they say we want everything. Uh, no. We're, we're going to remove all this. Uh, we're going to add. Because in the last live stream I did, I did pick up some players. Uh, good Lord, I'm going to have to remember who they are. <laughs> Uh, I did pick up some players that I'm thinking about uh, offering as trade bait. Uh, I know Jurgen says it was one of them. Now, if you note, this is a screen we haven't really looked at in any of my videos about NHL and how I can help Madden. This is something we really haven't looked at, so I'm going to dive into it a little bit here. But I'm going to go more into it when we start getting into actual trades, probably during the draft. Um, every player has a trade value. Now, in Madden, they do have trade values as well, but typically they're hidden until you actually offer the trade, and then you see that goofy green, yellow, red bar on the side of players or picks. That It's a lazy way to do it, in my opinion. This is a much smoother way to do it. Um, so essentially, trade value, obviously, the more the white bar is filled in, the higher the trade value this particular player has. So like, if I want to trade Anthony Sorelli, uh, I would probably get a lot back for him. I might even get a first round pick plus something for Anthony Shirelli. But I am offering Zimjus Jurgensen's. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm probably butchering it. I'm sorry if I am, Mr. Jurgensen's. But I'm going to put him on the list because I'm looking to move him and I'm not expecting a lot. I, I'm okay with not getting a ton, maybe a fifth or. It, I doubt a fourth, but like a fifth, a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick. I'm okay with that, uh, especially if it's in a future draft, just to, just to stockpile some picks. Because you can still land some good quality prospects in the fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds uh, of drafts, especially the early drafts, because a lot of these early drafts have real players that essentially uh, will be good quality players. There's a lot of talent in the pool, so to speak, because EA has created all these future prospects into the game and put them in there so that way you get those real prospects that are coming out that are you know 17 18 19 years old that are about to come into the nhl draft they put them in there so that way they can continue to grow and they'll be real players that you can take up um so i'm okay with a fifth sixth seventh round pick um there's a lot of depth in these drafts so let's see who else was i gonna offer no Jason Zucker was another guy I was going to offer, so I'm going to jump him on the list. Uh, Ethan Bear was another guy. He's got good trade value. He's a guy I usually would like to have. This is a guy I like to draft for my expansion draft, but he just doesn't fit the scheme, and I've got too many guys that fit where he fits. So I'm going to offer him up in a trade. Uh, and then next, uh, who else? Brady Shea, another guy I like to pick, but unfortunately he just doesn't fit the scheme. So you can see I've got a lot of varying trade values here. And these are guys that are officially on the block. Um, you can do a generic block, which I'll show in the surplus and once area. Um, let's see. Flip through, flip through, flip through. McCaution, no. Henrique, no. Calvin DeHaan. Okay. So I can plug five guys into this as specific things. And then I can go under surplus and i can do this like add items uh geez i probably should look at my roster shouldn't i well i can't i can't i can't exit out so let's uh let's do this defenseman any role any age well i say any age let's go 
26 to 50, any potential range, uh, low, high. Okay, this is what I had extra. And see, you can set all these things so, like, you can give away only certain players that match certain uh, things. So if I wanted to only offer guys that had three and a half star or better defense uh, uh, de uh, defense as their, like, their attribute setup, I could do that. And basically the computer would only offer me trades for players that they wanted that also fit these qualifications. So you can really fine tune your trade block. Uh, I'm going to go with, did that work? Yeah. Okay. So potential range is uh, AHL other D to franchise. I don't have franchise, but I mean, just to kind of, just to kind of show what I have to offer. I believe most of it is older. Actually, let me go in and edit that. Let me drop that down to 22. Yeah. 22 to 50. And then I will also, uh, I will throw forwards on the list too. I'll throw 21 to 50, same, same type of setup. And I don't really want to offer picks, but if I have to, I'm okay with it. If it helps me get better picks, I'm okay with this. So I'm okay with listing these as surpluses, but not the first round. So right now you see it's 2, 3, and 4 plus. So basically 2, 3, and then 4 through 7. They kind of lump it all together. So... Uh, basically, this means that I have a surplus, I feel, of defensemen age 22 to 50, of uh, basically just age 22 to 50. I didn't set any other things for it. Um, and then I feel like I have a, uh, an abundance of forwards age 21 to 50, which is pretty true. I have a bunch of players in that age range uh, and in that potential range. So basically, this is basically a general way of saying everybody but goalies is available if you want them. Come talk. So... I'm going to exit out, and then what I want to go under wants. Okay, under wants, what I like about this is you can see, let's go under here. So right now, the pro scout has basically said, okay, we're looking for a goalie, and we're looking for a starting goaltender. We're looking for a guy whose role is starting goaltender. So basically what the pro scout is saying is that my current starting goaltender, Brayton Holby, ain't good enough. That's what they're saying. So they're basically like, okay, we're looking for a starting goaltender for this team, and we don't care how old they are. We don't care what their contract is. We don't. We just we want that starting goaltender. Period. I'm okay with leaving that. And then this one, age 17 to 30. So we don't want anybody super old. Um, we want a defenseman, and we want to make sure that their role is top four defenseman. Okay. That's important because, well, I mean, I feel like I've got a bunch of that. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna don't want to leave that. I tell you what, I will leave this. I'm actually okay with this. I just want to see what the computer offers me back. That's what I'm more curious about. And then you see this third spot, second line forward. So if I want to go in and say I want a third line scoring, third line checking, fourth line forward, or hey, I want a first line forward. Let's go, let's go big. I could do that. I'm going to leave it at second line forward just to see what the computer offers me. But I may change that once we get into free agency. Um, because I have a few guys. And then uh, what I want is current first-round picks, and I want a hey, future first-round picks, baby. I want all the picks. Give me all the picks. I want all the picks. So we're going to leave that. We changed that a little bit. So this is now our trade block that we're going into the draft with. So as we go along the CPU, if they see anybody that they value, they will make an offer. And they will also make an offer if at my slot in the draft, whenever it comes up, if there's a player they feel like they, they want to take, the computer will make trade offers to move up in the draft, which I really, really like. They do get kind of aggressive with that. And they like, if they see, or if they have somebody they value, they will come up and they will offer you fair value for that player. So it's really, it's really interesting how the CPU AI works the draft. It's not perfect. They still make a lot of mistakes. There is still a lot of fine tuning to be done, but the core, as far as how they interact in the draft, is pretty is pretty realistic. It's not super realistic. It's not 100% spot on, uh, but it is it is a good starting point, which is more than I can say for other game titles. But it is a good starting point. So that's my trade block right there. As we go into the draft, and now <clears throat> we start the NHL entry draft. So here we go. We'll bounce in. Now I will say. It doesn't have the flair of Madden's draft where you see the draft stage and uh, you see the big board flash up with the uh, with the players. But you know what? In this case, I think simplicity works in its favor. Now, I will skip ahead 
a little bit, but I wanted to show how it works essentially. Basically, I sit here, I can do whatever I want as far as, uh, you know, looking at stuff. I can trade for this pick if I want to. I'll scroll around a little bit. For example, I could actually move it. You see that little, like, targeting icon? Uh, it, that That's essentially, basically, they're on the radar to trade their pick. That's what they're looking for. Anytime you see that marker in the top left corner of a team on this list, they want to trade their pick, which means that they're more likely to give up this pick. So I could move up to three from six, which actually might be appealing to me. Uh, and we're on a clock, so that means that I do have to... Now, usually the CPU will take most of the time off this pick, so they have three minutes per, per pick. So they will take a lot of this clock before they make a selection. But now I had not thought about trading up, but now that Carolina wants to trade up, do I have anybody I want to go get? Now, see, now I, this is where the excitement comes in because now it's like, okay, I wasn't anticipating jumping up in the draft, but I might do it now. Is it dang, oh, man, NHL ready? An NHL ready 18-year-old if he's there? Oh, that's, or this guy, Collins, a playmaker. Does he fit my coach, though? Does he fit my coach? Oh, behind the net, balance, shoot, balance, ba he fits decent. Oh, and a similarity of Patrick Kane. Oh, man. Oh, man. What the, why you do this to me, computer? Why you do this? Oh, okay, okay. So, so let's, let's, let's talk. Let's, let's, uh, let's find a trade. So this is a trade finder option. Now, the problem with this trade finder is going to be, uh, when the other team makes their pick, it will erase everything I've done. But I'm looking for the, Col no, not Columbus, it's uh, Carolina, the Hurricaneers. And I can quickly go to draft picks, and anything that's highlighted in red is basically what they want to give away. So I'm going to say here, and I want to hit L1 to find a trade, open block. That means no restrictions, nothing. Okay, so they don't want, they, they want to give up the pick, but they don't want to give it up to me with, with, with the players and the stuff I have available even if I, they don't look at the trade block. And there you can see, with 30 seconds left on the clock, they pick, uh, who is this guy? Ilya Filatov, a 80 overall elite, medium elite player. And so you can see, once they pick a player, you have all your attributes unlocked. You can see, uh, like, puck skills, defense, senses and skating, shooting, and physical. All those attributes are unlocked and ready to go. So this kid's a pretty good out of the gate player he's got a good shot uh for for you know starting out 86 really good passing stats of course he's a playmaker that makes sense um defensive awareness is really good and face-offs for a left winger is really good he could play penalty kill i mean he's small but i, I mean he could play 80 body checking for 5 9 169 are you kidding me holy crap this little this okay a little firecracker right there okay i like that 5'9", 169 with 80, 80 body checking. That's ridiculous. Okay, so I, I I could try and trade for this pick. I could still offer some stuff for this pick, but I like to try and do fine trade because I want to get a trade going. I don't want to fleece the CPU, and I feel like the easiest way to not fleece the CPU is to just do fine trade, and if they have offers, they will make them. So for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into my team. And I'm going to look, and I'm going to see, I'm going to throw Ethan Bear out there, and I'm going to hit L1 to find a trade with an open block. Basically, I'm not taking my block into consideration. What are you going to offer me for this player? So I'm going to see if anybody, so you can see I have 34 trades. Now, the clock is still ticking on the draft counter in the background, so if they make a pick while I'm looking through this stuff, I will get this erased, but I can always pop it back up. So it's not a huge deal. Let's see, second and seventh. I don't want Duncan Keith. I get a fourth this year, a third next year, and Bocage, who I don't know anything about. I'd have to look. Caught a fourth and a seventh. Bowers, a fourth and a seventh. Let me look at let me look at Colorado. What do we got? 46 seconds on the clock. And see, you can pull up the trade. You can pick the trade and basically it puts it in the trade box. Uh and I can go in here and I can look at this player. Top six potential. Uh, he's fully scouted. I do not have Fog of War on, so these players will be fully scouted. Otherwise, I'd need to be scouting them. When I play in expansion mode, 
I, I typically will uh, will play with with fog of war off because I like to know at least early on what my players can do, and I'll turn it on after a year or two. Um, <clears throat> forward line two and penalty killing lines eventually, but not yet. That's not bad. That's not a bad pick for basically. I get a future future prospect, but do I really want a future prospect? I guess I need to look real quick. Now, usually I don't take this long with the draft. I usually just kind of throw stuff out there and just take what I can get. But I'm trying to talk through the process a little bit. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, of differences here between normal. Yeah, I got Shirelli for the second line. I don't need Shire I got Shirelli, Bovillier, Anderson. I really just want picks. I really just want picks for the guy. So tell you what, let, let's let's talk to Carolina here. Let's let's let's. Oh, they don't want to give it up now. Okay, you see it's not in red anymore, so that means they do not want to give it up now. So I am I am not going to be able to get that pick because if a team doesn't want to give up something, if it's in white, uh, that means they're not looking to trade it, but they, they're, they're open to listening, but they're not going to just give it up for nothing. Usually if they're in red or in a color, uh, they're more willing to give it up, which means that the, you, the trade block bar, you can be closer to it and it might go through. But when they don't want to give it up, you pretty much have to essentially offer more than the, the player or pick is worth to get that player or that pick. So I'm not really looking to do that with this team. I don't want to I don't want to sell the farm too early. So I think what I'm going to do while I'm waiting is I think I'm going to go in. I'm going to look and I'm going to try and trade Jason Zucker now. I got 11. OK, picks three and four. OK, that's to a Pacific division or yeah, Pacific. So, no. I'd be okay trading it, but I don't want Halak. I don't need another goalie. Uh, you're still giving goalies. No, I don't want a goalie. <laughs> Montreal just straight off in a second round pick. I'd probably be okay with that. Brooke? I don't know who Brooke is. I'd have to look. My sack. Uh, I should be okay with picks, I think. Radish. Power forward, I know. Barry Boulay. Okay, let's look at this one. Barre Boulay. One minute left on the clock. What's Barre Boulay got? Top six, 23 years old, playmaker. Ah, uh, no. I don't want I don't want a fourth line guy. Don't want a fourth line guy. Alright, so let's go back in. One thing I don't like about the trade block is you can't just automatically reset it. It's 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 a process, so that's kind of a pain. But I'm okay with that. I think I'm just gonna take the second round pick. Next year's draft second round pick. It's an old guy. He can have it. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not. There are guys I'm trying to dump just to just to kind of get future assets. So Jason Zucker was not going to be a fit on this team uh, anyway. I believe he was going to be at best a line two guy, and I already have plenty of younger guys playing that line. Let me see. I got him listed here. Yeah, he was a line two guy. So. I think that's a good trade. Second round pick for a guy I really wasn't. Yeah, that was a guy I was thinking about trading to get it. It was Solovyov. Solovyov. This is the guy I was going to try and trade up to get. Depth defenseman, defensive defenseman. Uh, really good physical attributes. Slap shot accuracy. But to kind of bring it back to the draft itself, if you look at these numbers, Puck skills and defense and senses, senses and skating and shooting and physical. All those attributes underneath it actually tie in with this stuff. Shooting, puck skills, senses. So basically shooting is all the shooting attributes. Puck skills is all those puck attributes averaged together. So I'm still thinking both of these, one of these two guys is probably going to be the guy. I think I think so. We will have to see how the rest of the draft picks out. Um, I still want to go ahead and trade some players. Uh, I'm gonna trade Jurgensen's just to see what I get for him. Like I said, it's probably gonna be oh wow fourth. I don't want Halak though. Two goalies? Seriously, I don't need I don't need one much less two. A fourth and a seventh from Colorado. Hmm, it's actually pretty good. I kind of want future assets though. Fourth and a seventh. Fourth and a seventh from Edmonton. Skinner and a seventh. Ooh, that's a goalie I do like. I played this enough to where I know what I like to get, and that's a go that's a goalie I like to pick up. Let me see the Skinner guy. Skinner and a seventh, because the seventh appeals to me. Minor starting goalie. He's a starter potential. Twenty-one years old. Seventy-five overall. So he's already 
pretty close to ready. So starter potential. I'm gonna go in and add. I'm not gonna add the player, but I wanna add. I wanna just look. He's a 68 overall. He's 19 years old. 85 durability. He still has some years to grow. This guy is closer to ready. Uh, what do I have? Okay, I have. Okay, Carter Ingram's gonna be my minor leaguer. I'd be okay with Rodriga, honestly. I tell you what, if you give me Rodriga, how about Rodriga and a seventh? Well, let's negotiate a little bit. Draft picks. I want it seventh next year. Give me a seventh next year, and would you do that? Okay, no. So basically, it's Rodriga only. I tell you what, how about how about we do this? Let let let's talk turkey a little bit. How about if you give me a sixth next year? I'll give you a seventh next year. Will that work? Maybe? Yay! Okay, cool. So I basically moved my seventh up to a sixth. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. That's actually not a bad deal. Okay, so I'm going to exit out because the uh, other team is about to make a pick at eight seconds left. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sim the next pick and just get to mine. Uh, let's see. What's he? Is he? Dent Ford. Craig Collins. A playmaker. Ooh, look at that. Very not physical, but that slap shot and that passing skills, man, that's good. Detroit got them a good one. And a guy who can do face-offs. That's weird. Having so many guys that can do face-offs. Okay. So I don't think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sim this next pick just to get to mine. Uh, Pelton in. Other forward elite. What is he, a two-way forward? Two-way forward. Uh, left wing. Lots of left wing going early. Let's see, we had left wing, left wing, left wing. Dang, four left wingers. There's been no centerman taken off the plate yet. Uh, so I got Morosa, who is a total non-fit. That sucks. I got Christensen, who I could take. I got Rankle, who I could take. But again, a guy that doesn't really fit the scheme. I think he's, at best, a fourth liner, I think. No, he'd be a third liner. Ah, oh, man, that's tough. I, I do like taking centermen, because centermen are really hard to find. But, and I really hate taking another left winger, because they've done nothing but take left. This guy fits the top six profile, though. I should go with that. A guy who in two years could be a top six forward for me, and a playmaker. But the thing is, I have to look at is, in two years, who does he replace? Now, the nice thing about offline mode is that at any I have five timeouts I can call uh, during this spectrum and if I call a timeout it doesn't pause the draft it just adds five minutes to my timer so that way it gives me a little bit more time to look around and make an informed decision um, I just took one just to show you what it looked like I don't think I need to make an informed decision because the problem with taking Grachev is if I take Grachev in two years I could trade Beauvillier because Bovier would be 25 at that point and replace him with a younger guy, a playmaker to go with two-way forward and power forward. That would be nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Grachev here. Gustav's Grachev, 18 years old, 5'10", 170 pounds. Welcome to the Seattle Kraken. Top six playmaker, 66 overall. So a guy. So let's see what we drafted here. Decent Decent passing skills for this young of a kid. Decent numbers. You got to remember, he's three years out. So a lot of these numbers, if you look at him, comparatively speaking to like, you know, this guy. Well, not this guy, but this guy was well, 68 overall. So never mind. I, it, so you can see they took him second overall. If you look, he's got, oh my gosh, look at that shot. Jesus. But you can see his speed is 70. So like this guy needs some work in the minor leagues before he'll become and they will grow even if you don't play them but they grow more if you play them in their role which this guy's roles in other forwards so he's okay just sitting the bench for right now but as they get better overalls they will want to do other things so this guy could just sit the bench for a year for me in the ahl his speed is 80 so at least he's got some some moves he's he's at least 70s in everything so i mean that's not a terrible player i can live with that so in two or three years, I might move Beauvillier on. He can basically replace Beauvillier, be a good playmaker for Josh Anderson since I'm saddled with Josh Anderson's contract at power forward. Right wing for like ever and ever. So let's see. Check my phone real quick. While I... 
All right, so let's do this. Let's find some trades for the remainder of these players. I may make this draft video a little shorter than I want to because I may have to go up, run out, and do something in that horrible, horrible real world. Let's go to Braden Shea, Brady Shea and see what we get here. Six trades. Boston, I do not want a lock. Vegas is second and Chicago is fourth. Well, I like the fourth from Chicago because they probably won't be great. Vegas is second is going to suck. I don't want Duncan Keith contract. Radish, Morand, Kachuk. Let me look at Morand real quick. I don't need a lot of youth forward line four but a playmaker top six though yeah again I, I don't I want to trade Brady Shea Brady Shea for something a little better than that wow there okay so <laughs> that's the only one that has picks involved my goodness okay <laughs> uh Duncan Keith now the only reason I would consider this is because I do need to keep some salary at some point. He doesn't fit the scheme. Okay, well, that, that ends that problem. Because I'm not going to take on a contract unless it's something that can actually benefit me on the team. Travis Frederick and Halak. I really don't want Halak. But if... Well, actually, I, I, that's that's true. Okay, Darren, pick. See, that's what happens. Pick comes up. Um, Let me find a trade again for Brady Shea. Because I wouldn't necessarily, but that would be a waste of a trade because Halak I'd almost want to have to resign. So I'm basically trading for Travis Frederick at this point. Oh no, don't discard the trade. I want to look at this guy. Trent Frederick, not Travis. I'm sorry, Trent. Power for Ooh, I like power forwards. And he fits line too. But so does Sorelli. Oh man. Oh, power forward centerman though. Golly. Why you do this to me, Boston? And then Halak. He's a starting goalie. He's the same as Braden Holtby. But I got a backup in Aiden Hill. I could tandem Halak and Holtby and see what happens for a year. I mean, he's still good. If he falls off a starter, though, I'm screwed. And I'd have to resign him to boot. He'd probably resign for pretty cheap, though. Uh... I'd be doing it for free. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the Chicago deal. I'm gonna take the Chicago deal. I'm gonna take this deal. Let's see, what else do we have? Ethan Bear. Where can I send Ethan Bear to? I'm not gonna trade with Boston. Logan Stanley. Logan Stanley. Let me look at him real quick. Logan Stanley, what can you do for me? Ooh. Minor top four. Yeah. I'm going to take a future defenseman here. Logan Stanley, uh, just to kind of show real quick, top four potential, 22 years old, 74 overall, so he's going to be in the AHL. Uh, guys, a defensive defenseman, which fits my defensive profile for my coach. Top four defensive pairings and penalty kill. Yeah, this is the guy I'm going to trade for. That's a guy I'm gonna trade for. That's an easy. That's an easy trade. So there we go. Defenseman for defenseman, and that gets rid of three of my five guys I wanted to move on from. Who else did I want to move on for? Calvin DeHaan. Mm, and who's the other guy? There was another guy I had on the list. That's gonna make me mad now. Who's the other guy I had on the list? Uh, Carlo Grachev, got Spear Stanley. Uh. I know Calvin DeHaan was it. I'll wait. I'll wait and trade DeHaan after the draft. I think I'm gonna wait till after the draft to trade him. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sim options. I'm gonna send to my next pick, and I'm just gonna kind of go through and make my picks real quick and go ahead and finish off this draft. Uh, hopefully on a good note, but maybe not. <laughs> so Kubacek is no stats three years shoot pinch no doesn't fit my scheme at all at all at all nope shoot pinch what was it shoot pinch yeah nope there is zero fit here sorry kubachek even if you're good i'm not taking you uh somek is a oh pinch shoot i don't need pinch shoot guys all right anybody else down here maybe a guy okay 
Miles Curry, pinch cycle, could maybe John Carlson, so offensive defenseman style. I will take that and hope it's top four. It's top, low top four. I'm okay with that. He's a couple of years out. So that's actually a pretty solid second round pick. A guy who could potentially be a first round defensive pairing for me based on my coach. Uh, but a guy that maybe won't be talent wise as high as what I'd like. So third round now, we're starting to get into the Drex. Okay, this is the guy I tagged, Brady Burns. And I tagged him because he matched my coach profile. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this kid. And gosh, I hope he's top nine because that AHL top six scares me. In the third round, I'd really like you to be top nine. I'll take bottom six. It's a compromise. So a guy who could play... I believe he was going to be good on my second line, maybe. So he, he doesn't really fit that profile. But a guy who could maybe be my AHL uh, second liner. Bottom six wasn't a great pick in third round, but I'll take it. Uh, this was a guy who matched... What did he match? Maybe matched my second line or fourth line. So if he's if he's bottom six... He'll be a fourth line centerman. If he's t if he's top six or top nine, he could potentially be a second line guy for me. He kind of fits in either spot. Bottom six low. Okay, boom. There we go. Fourth line centerman right there of the future. All right, so fifth round. We're jumping through this rather quick. Sergeyev. They say I should take him. Pinch shoot. I can't take that guy. Pinch shoot does not fit my coach. Pinch cycle is slightly better. Pinch shoot does not fit. Cole Stewart. So now you can see in the fifth round, I have no clue on a bunch of these players. So I'm kind of just picking blind here. Uh, when in doubt, pick a centerman. Crash the net. That's a third line style player for me. Uh, you know, I'll take a third line. If you, What are you? Bottom six, third line. That's close enough. 163. All right. Another centerman that matches... Oh, he's a potential first line guy, but I doubt he, he's going to be AHL top six. I almost would be willing to bet the house. AHL top. So basically, this guy I picked up, I'm basically going to groom him to be the future welcome committee in the in the in the AHL to all my prospects and watch them go up to the NHL because this guy's never going to be much other than a potential a borderline NHL prospect. But it's the sixth round of the draft, so borderline NHL prospects. I can live with. I think this is another guy who's going to be a third line potential guy. Yeah. So let's pick him up. And he's bottom six as well. So my first two picks, I feel like were pretty good. The rest of them were kind of iffy. <laughs> All right. But then it shows you a list of your picks and you can actually look by round and by team. So you can look at different teams and see what they picked up. So I'm going to exit out and I'm going to end the video right here. And in the next video, we will talk about re-signs. We'll go through the re-sign phase. We'll show a restricted free agency. We'll go through the debate process on how to go, what we need to go through to re-sign players, who we need to re-sign. And then after that, we'll probably do free agency as well and get to the beginning of season number one. But that'll be in the next video. Guys, if you, uh, if you like this video, give it a like. Uh, give me a subscribe if you want to. It's up to you. Not making you. Uh, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll catch you later.